Hello and welcome. So far in our sequence of videos, we have discussed the general idea of clustering. We have discussed k-means clustering. And now we're going to discuss something that's known as hierarchical clustering. It's a different type of clustering, which overcomes some of the opportunities that we had with k-means clustering. Let's get started. So let's say we have our data available in a multi-dimensional space in the form of these points. Just for ease of understanding, we're keeping it very limited to seven points right now to convey the core idea behind this approach. The specific approach that we're going to take for hierarchical clustering is known as the agglomerative approach. Let's see what it is. So agglomerative approach says that when we have our data available in a multi-dimensional space, we begin by assuming each point to be a cluster in itself. Every single point is treated as a cluster. And then what we do is we start looking for the shortest distance between these points to form bigger clusters. So amongst all these distances that you can see here, the shortest distance looks like is this distance between the points C and D. So we will join them. On the right, we are trying to create a graph which will try to represent whatever we do here in a slightly different format. So when we join these two points here and it forms a bigger cluster, the same event can be shown on this graph as well, like this. In this graph, the y-axis represents the distance between the two points that you have joined or clusters that you've joined, you can say. Now we have five points and one cluster. So there is a possibility that we join a point with another point or we join this cluster to another point. But again, we have to join based on the distance, which is shortest. So in this case, this distance seems to be the shortest distance so far. Let's join these two points, F and G, and the same event would lead to formation of a cluster, which can be represented on this graph like this. Obviously, the distance between F and G would have been greater than C and D, and that's why we joined them later, not in the first code itself. Now we have multiple possibilities. We may join a point to another point, like A, B, and E are points. They can be joined to each other. We may join a point to a cluster. For example, this E could be joined to this cluster F, G, or could be joined to this cluster C, D. Or we could also join these two clusters. But again, we have to join based on the distance, which is short. In this case, looks like this would be the shortest distance. Now, when you join a point to another point, that's something which is represented by a term distance, and there are different types of distances. But when you join a point to a cluster or a cluster to another cluster, we generally call it linkage. And there are multiple types of linkages, but for now we are just assuming that we are joining the point to the center of the cluster. It's not always that we follow this. There are different choices. We'll probably be discussing that in a separate video. But now just assume, that this point is being joined to the center of this cluster FG. When this happens, you end up getting a bigger cluster, which accommodates all these points. And the same event here would be represented in this form. So there's another point E, which has been joined to the cluster FG. So now the possibilities are that we can join a point to a point or any of these points to any of these clusters. But again, we will choose the shortest distance. And which is the shortest distance? In this case, A and B seem closer to each other compared to the kind of clusters that we have here. So let's join these two points and that forms another cluster. Once again, if we were to represent this event on this graph, it would look like this. Now we are not left with any other point to join. We have only three clusters. So we can join cluster AB to cluster CD or any of these clusters to this cluster EFG. Once again, the shortest distance so we may end up joining these two clusters first, just based on the proximity. And if that happens, we can further expand this cluster to four points, which will be A, B, C, D. How do we represent this here on the plot? Now if we join these two clusters, A, B to C, D, we will form a bigger cluster. The way we've been representing this information on this graph is slightly not in order. We'll have to shuffle the position of A, B and E, F, G, which can be conveniently done. So we just shuffle the position of A, B with EFG so that we could perform this join C and D without this intervening in between. Now we can easily form a bigger cluster and we can perform this join here on this graph as well like this. All we have now are these two clusters and we can join these two clusters conveniently to form one bigger cluster. Same thing could be represented on the graph like this. So if you realize we started by joining the closest points then it became a comparison between a point and another point and a point and a cluster, and finally between a couple of clusters, and we arrived at this structure. If you see, 
The graph that we've obtained on the right is popularly known as the dendrograph. It's a tree graph. And if you realize this kind of resembles with the hierarchy charts in the organizations. And that's why this approach is known as the hierarchical clustering. Now, what is the advantage of hierarchical clustering? If you see in this entire approach, we did not have to make any assumption about the number of clusters to begin with. In fact, we can decide the number of clusters based on the distance. If we choose to cut this dendrogram from this point onwards, we draw a horizontal line, we will end up getting these two clusters, A, B, C, D, and E, F, G. If we choose to cut it here, we will end up getting three clusters, C, D, A, B, and E, F, G, as we had earlier. So this approach did not make any assumption about the number of clusters to begin with. That's one advantage with hierarchical clustering. What are the disadvantages? There are two main disadvantages with hierarchical clustering. Number one, it is computationally expensive. While it was intuitive to understand that we are joining the shortest distances, you can imagine that in order to arrive at the shortest distance, you would have done all possible comparison between the distances possible. So between every single pair of points or points and clusters or clusters and clusters, we would have calculated the distance and we would have settled for the shortest distance. Not once, but you have to do it multiple times. And imagine if you have a large data set, this would become a very computationally expensive operation. Once again, hierarchical clustering is also sensitive to outliers. Most of the clustering techniques are typically sensitive to outliers. So this was a quick introduction to hierarchical clustering. In a subsequent video, we will be talking about the distance and the linkage methods. And then we'll perform the hands-on for hierarchical clustering as well. Hope this helps. Thank you.